Hi, good evening everybody. Welcome to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. Glad you could join us today. And I got a couple special guests here with me today. It's Jan Tung and uh, Daniel Moody. And we're going to talk about a very uh, sensitive subject, a very severe subject. And I dare say you probably got one of the toughest jobs that God ever put on this earth. And you're doing it right here in Nelson County, working with a... Uh, well, suicides, yeah. and I know it was, it was something that we don't talk about a whole lot. And, uh, matter of fact, I know even the news, news reporters don't even report on it hardly at all because I was in the media business for years, but you deal with it every day. On a daily basis. Well, God bless you, first of all, but secondly, tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, I mainly work with uh, grief support and suicide because, mainly suicide because I lost my son in 2007 due to suicide. Mm-hmm. So that's what got me started with the suicide program. So with your son, let's just go. With just a, with a, how, I know you don't ever get over it. I mean, that's not something you ever get over. But what did that what what did that do for you? I mean, did you start? Was that something that you? Was it the grief, the the feeling of what that made you decide I'm going to find out what I can do to make so somebody else doesn't have to go through this? Well, I'll have to. Been on the floor for, let's see, two years. Yeah, that's where I was at, depressed. Yeah. So uh, that last day on the floor, I got up and I said, uh, I looked in the mirror and I said, I got to do better than this. I got to get out of here and do something. So I drove to the uh, stop sign. It's the first day out. Drove to the stop sign, and sit there for almost an hour. I'm like, why am I sitting? Why didn't the light change? Uh, why didn't the light change? <laughs> So I drove back to the house, and uh, every day I would take a, go a little bit farther, mm -hmm. just get out to get over it. But uh, God, it, it's it's hard. It's oh, been hard. I can't imagine. But uh, but you discovered that other people were going through the same thing you were. Yes. So a lot of them. So how did you find these other people? Are you are you just sort of gravitate together? I mean, what, what brings people together that's suffering through the same depression and grief? All you got to do is say that um, suicide or death or something, then they, they gravitate to you. Mainly stores or you'd be sitting down at the library or something, somebody come up and talk about uh, the loss of a daughter or a parent or something like yeah. that. So that gets you talking about that then. Is it something that people want to talk about? Some people don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I think they'd rather keep it to themselves. That way, I don't know how they deal with it like that. I tried to deal with it like that. It didn't work. Yeah. You got to get out and do something about it. Yeah. And having other people that have experienced the same thing. It's not like talking to somebody that hadn't been through it. I mean, no. you know, people always, first thing that people always say is, uh, I know how you feel. But they really don't know how you feel. No, and the weirdest part was, uh, I think my son had been dead for... Uh, Two months, and this lady walked up. She said, "Aren't you through grieving yet?" Oh my God! And uh, yeah, it makes you sort of want to uh, slap a person. But yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you got two months. Usually, it's about three days. And what, what's wrong with Daniel? Tell us a bit about what, what, what brings you to this group. Uh, well, Janet came to me asking for my help with the mental health side of the suicide and grief mm -hmm. group. Because with all of the, all of this going on, it can cause depression, anxiety sometimes. So I'm kind of there for the moral part of the group. When you say moral support, I mean, do you do you talk to you to them? Do you just are you just there? Is your presence there? What was it makes other people feel better? Me talking with them, helping others, helping them through their thought process, mm -hmm. through those in their Son, husband, wife, whoever they lost in their life. Yeah. Well, I know it's 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 tough for them, but it's also got to be tough for you you all to be with people like that because I know recently you and I talked and you lost one because I know it's somebody you've been working with over and over and over and they committed suicide anyway, and that had to be tough. Yep. Something you don't get over. Mm. But. I guess we're, instead of rather, rather talking about the causes of suicide, we're trying to get people through the process. And you've got a group. You formed a group. What's the name of the group you've got? It's, uh, I can get my card. All right. But uh, 
So Daniel, you've been a part of this group for a while then. Yes, yeah, okay. about a year. Nelson County Grief and Suicide Prevention Support Group. So are we look I know your prevention's a big part of it, but obviously you're working with the aftermath as well. So it's oh, sort yeah. of a very um, suicide doesn't end when somebody takes no. their life. I mean it's no. uh, sometimes it's the beginning for somebody else's grief for many, many years. And somebody else's Usually that other person is the one that winds up committing suicide also. Really? Well, I guess so. Like I said, depression can do some serious things to people that they don't understand. And we all suffer depression sometimes. Yeah. There's no question about that. But deep depression. We're talking about a depression that... It doesn't go away. That doesn't go away. That just hounds at you to the point that you think suicide is the only answer. Yes. And it's not. Nope. But uh, you can talk to you blue in the face. A lot of times they don't let... It, it doesn't happen. Uh, it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. they're going. Once they put it in their head that they want to kill themselves, they're going to do it anyway. How, what, is there any particular? I know everybody's different, but is there any particular signs like you know when somebody's? It's just talking about suicide with the biggest sign. Or what is it that if you look to somebody and you say, "I think they're suicidal," or somebody that needs my help, what what would tip you off, or is it just the fact that they tell you they're suicidal? Usually, they don't tell you that. They're not going to tell you. Yeah. They, uh, like this one guy that called me, he said, the, well, I'm not crazy and I'm, I'm not going to kill myself or anything. Then uh, two weeks after that, he killed himself anyway. Yeah. I guess the pain is just so, so overbearing. So what, what do you do? I mean, I know you all meet. How, when do you all, how often do you all meet? We eat it. We, we meet every third Thursday of the month. Every third Thursday of the month? I know this is up on Robin Drive. No, so. we meet at the Nelson County Public oh, Bill, Library. Oh, Bill's library mm -hmm. now. Well, at 7 o'clock. met with you one day. You all were a bunch of you there <laughs> yeah. at Robin Drive. And, uh, so it's at 7 o'clock in the evening, third mm -hmm. Thursday of the month at Nelson County Library. 7 o'clock. So, well, again, you know, it's... I know you know you've had some success, obviously, or yes, you've been. In, yes. It's got to make you feel good when you help it somebody. Does. It really, really, really does. Yeah. Because I wish somebody had been there to help me. Mm -hmm. Well, so. you know, like I said, I think that's the problem right now is we've got people out there. We've got people everywhere. I mean, probably half a dozen or so people watching right now suffering through this that just doesn't know there's other people out there. They just don't make that connection. And I guess no. that's what we got to do is we got to find somebody. Now, if somebody is a, needs your help, yeah, I'm sure you're there more than just the third Thursday of the month. If somebody wants oh, to yeah. give you a call or says, you know, I need, I need to talk to somebody, or I need to get you in touch with somebody, or point me in the right direction, right. I mean, uh, how would they get a hold of you? They call me at 502-203-4404. And it's day or night. 404, uh -huh. well, like I know it's day or night because I know one time I dealt with you before on some of these things and you're up in all hours of the night. So uh, you've been through some tragedy in your life. Oh, There's yeah. no question about yeah. that. I'm uh, supposed to speak at the uh, uh, St. Monica's Saturday uh -huh. for the breast cancer survivors. I don't, I'm not a survivor of breast cancer, but I'm a survivor. Mm -hmm. So I figure, you know, if I can help somebody, I'm going to help them. You have been a survivor. And like I said, does that make you stronger? Does that make you a, are you a different person than you were 10, 15 years ago? I think so. I think so. Do you have a mission now? Or is yes, it I, have a, I have a goal, and I'm going to plow right on through it, and I'm succeed. Well, that's great. And again, you know, it's a 203. 4404, give Janet a call if you need her help. And Daniel, uh, so what do you think? I mean, I, you've been involved with this for a while. You've met a lot of people that's probably going through a pretty hard time. I mean, how do you deal with that? I just go freely the best I can, help them the best I can. So you, you see any people that come in that's just so down, you think there's no way you can help them, and a few months later they're up laughing and talking, eating pizza, and acting like, you know, life's not, not as bad as they thought it was? Yeah, for a couple of people, if I'd, I know if I was like that. Just being in the same room, that your presence can help somebody get through some a suicidal or going through grief. Well, that's probably the biggest thing is we've got to realize we're not alone. I mean, I think that's what the problem with a lot of people because most people get down and they think, you know, I'm going through this all by myself. I'm all alone. And, 
even have other people around them, it's just not quite the same. So and yeah. it's usually you can't just talk to family. Mm -hmm. It's mainly an outsider. If you get an outsider, you talk to that person a lot easier than you can family mm -hmm. members. And somebody that's been through it, survived it, as you said. You know, you not only been through it, but you took you a long time, but you become a survivor, you become tougher, and that mission means so. A lot. You'll try to save them all, right? I'm trying. <laughs> well, Janet Tongue and Daniel Moody here with us today talking about suicide prevention, suicide grief. And again, it's one of the subjects that uh, we avoid talking about to a very large degree because it is hard. People keep it private in their families, and they, 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 it's just one of those things that uh, become family secrets or things like that. But we don't want to don't want to leave it like that because there is help available and Janet and you and Daniel are providing help for people and uh, again the third Thursday of every month